the next thing we're going to address is the person wanting to pull their arm out. And that, that's going to be done one of two ways, actually. Let me switch with you, Liam. So the incorrect way, or the harder way, incorrect way, the, the, but the way that is sometimes people will still try and do it is they'll try and get his head up and just pull his arm straight out this way, right? And that's tricky because I'm going to arm lock him as he goes out, which I'll show you as we go, and it's also difficult. Uh, but if he starts to do that, go ahead. I'm going to keep my arm, my thumb going up towards my head. I'm going to put my, my uh, hand on his shoulder, and then I just apply the pressure there, okay? So we'll go back to our spot. We're in our grip. Foot on the hip, I'm here. He keeps his thumb down and tries to pull his arm straight out. As soon as I let it slide just a little bit, my hand goes right to the front of the deltoid. And what I'm doing there is I'm making it difficult for Liam to rotate his arm, right? So he can't rotate his hand. And then I like to move my leg down to the elbow. And it's really my left knee that does that break, right? If I need to move back a little more on the wrist, I will. But that's the arm lock. Okay, it's very subtle. You guys want to do that real slow because it comes on kind of quick. But he may not even think about it. He's just trying to pull his arm out quickly. Maybe, maybe you're sweaty, you're not wearing a gi when he goes. You let it slide a little bit and then you catch. If it goes all the way out there, I've lost it. Then we have to switch to a plotter or something else. So that's the first way. Second way, which is more technical, is he's going to bring his hand down like that, and then try and, you gotta, yeah, you gotta relax your arm. Spaghetti the arm, as wrestlers would say, the more relaxed your arm is, the easier it is to get it out, which is counterintuitive. But you put that thumb down, and then kind of whip your arm out good like that. That is the correct way, okay? And it's a little bit trickier to deal with. But as I feel him do that, I'm going to go ahead and turn your elbow down. I'm gonna put my hand here and just hold on to that elbow, okay? So either my right or my left is going on to the elbow and I'm holding it to my body. Now I go to pull it out. So it's just difficult there for a second. And then I can reach over and thread for a, for a deep Kimura, okay? So let's look at that again slow. We're here, he's going to pull the arm out. I feel him rotate that thumb down. I switch to the elbow. And all I'm doing is I'm holding his arm to my body. Go to pull your arm out. Difficult, right? And then I go deep as I can with my arms. So I'm, I'm in here like this. I'm not trying to grab his wrist, my own wrist. I really just want to cross wrists like that, okay? And then that's my grip, so one more time slow. So thumb down like this way? Yeah. Like my thumb point this way? Yeah, because that's if you really don't, good. right? If you keep your thumb up, put your arm down, try and pull it out, yeah. you get the first one. Yeah. So you go down that way, right? And then I capture the elbow. And I'm just locking my, my own elbow down to hold it in place. And then I just care about getting, all I care about here is getting deep. So now his arm's connected to my body. It's not, not my upper body um, using muscle to submit his arm. It's my whole body against that one arm. You guys got it? Okay, go for it. Two arm locks. Go for it. About the upper body part for a second. This is not a great grip. So I've grabbed his wrist, grabbed my own hand, even if I go without the thumb, which is a little stronger. And with his arms separated from my body, if he's a real strong guy, this could be hard to finish, right? And he'll straighten out his arm and you'll wind up losing the Kimura. So the deeper I am, the, the stronger that grip is, number one. So I'm not looking for this, I'm looking for kind of like this. I want to get in here. But even more important than that, is the fact that I hug the arm to my body. So I don't want any separation between his bicep and tricep and my chest. So it's like this. Now go to try and straighten your arm and move it. It's very difficult. And it's my whole body from my hip rotating that puts the pressure on the arm. It's not my arms lifting his arm. It's my whole body moving at the hip. So that's how you get a a solid good Kimura like that, okay? So some, some guys will go so far as, even Howard was having people put their uh, chin kind of on the elbow, just as a reminder to connect your whole body to the arm. It's not a bad idea, right? Just understand the point of it. The first thing I do when I get this grip 
is not try and finish, but I try and hug. I'm gonna bring my elbows in and I just wanna hug his arm real tight because I know if I get that, I'm gonna finish. If I, if I lose that and go to finish early and I try and go too fast, then you, you're gonna lose the arm, right? So first thing I do is just hug. Everything tightens up like this and then I can take my time on the finish. Now with your foot, one way or another, my right leg needs to be up. I don't want it to be lazy on the ground. Hops over, it's up. And then my left leg either comes across the back to help prevent him from rolling. And sometimes what I'll do if he's super strong is I'll swing my leg and lock his arm in with my own leg. So now he can't straighten his arm at all, right? Another variation of this is to put your foot on the mat. And the nice thing about this is now I'm gonna transfer my weight from my foot into the back of Liam's shoulder. So I just push off the mat a little bit with my left foot into his shoulder, try and get posture. Makes it very hard for the guy to sit up and get posture. Because I basically got a kickstand on the mat. So my whole body here is putting all the weight right here. Okay, and also he can't roll. So in some ways, like it's easier for the guy to get posture from here and just sit straight up if he's super strong than it is from here. I do want my foot between his feet. I don't want to be outside. I just want to be in here. But then I, um, my hips aren't on the mat. I'm using that to lift my body up. Now I hug the arm, take the grip off, but I hug the arm like this, and then that's what's important, right? Try and move, try and get the arm out. Very difficult, because you got a nice locked in position. You guys see it? Okay, go ahead, back and forth. When you're playing this guard, and you guys are playing this game here, and you feel the guy's about to posture up, you can drop that foot down to the mat real quick. Go to sit up, it's not gonna sit up, and then I bring it back. So anytime I need to control his posture, I put that foot on the mat like a kickstand. That allows me to transfer weight here. Very difficult for him to lift up, and then when he stops, stops trying, I just go back. So that's an important tool you guys will need there. So what we don't wanna do, no, there are other things that we'll do to put our foot on the mat for sweeps and posture breaks, but um, what you don't wanna do is put your foot or hand on the mat to move your own body. So people get in the habit of going for triangles, or going for sweeps, and we'll touch the mat to turn ourselves into a scissor sweep position or something like that, that's a terrible habit. So it disconnects you from your opponent and then gives them a moment they can pass. So we wanna to learn to use our legs like chopsticks to move our body so we're always connected to our opponent. That's the idea. Make sense?